I was carving up a storm here in Vermont, but I knew in my heart I had to get to Carrara. I had to get to the finest marble. So to do that, I joined an MBA program, which was mostly studying art history, but it got me as far as Florence. So I skipped out of that program, went to Carrara, and I had really, for me, it was an epiphany because when I got there, there were sculptors all over the place. That moment was clearly where I knew where my life was going. This was my calling. I knew when I was really young that building was part of my DNA. The inspiration for me was having grown up looking across the highway at the oldest marble quarry in the United States in Dorset, Vermont. And that was my home. Those were my stomping grounds. The humility is something that is inherent in working in stone. You have to respect the material. We're all athletes, in my case, with ski racing. And when you work hard at something and you have some success, the way we were brought up is you have two minutes to smile and you go back to work. It wasn't about the result, it was the activity that was important. So that, unknowingly to me, that life of being a competitive athlete transitioned into being a patient stone sculptor. When I became an art student, the two-dimensional arts weren't quite as inspiring for me because of that physical need to have something three-dimensional, something as solid and real world as we are. Stone permeates life like no other material. It's former life, ground up, crushed, so that immediately allows you to connect with the sculpture. Some of the stone I use come from Cave Michelangelo, which was the quarry. He quarried many of his pieces. And there's just a sense of time that permeates through the stone, and you just feel like you're part of a continuum. I draw in three dimensions. So I use wire and screen and aluminum to bend and form the piece and then create it from that point in plaster before I make my final jump into stone. After I create my models here in my Vermont studio, I take them to my studio in Carrara, Italy and find the right stone to make the model fit. Sculpture of all the mediums in art is one of the most collaborative. One cannot make a 50-ton sculpture carved from a 450-ton block without the right help. And so I have the utmost respect and dialogue with my team. They understand stone, they grew up in Italy. When we work together, we really are sharing a dream. There's a lot of subtlety, um, um, a little bit of luck that went into the commission for passage for the Don Lem Kendall Sculpture Garden at PepsiCo. When Don Kendall invited me to see their sculpture garden, we walked through the gardens and we talked about what inspires, what's the nature of inspiration. I would never, ever had anybody just say, here's our space, what do you want to do? And that's really true patronage. He took a risk on me that nobody in my life that point had ever done. Passage is all about participating with life. You go up to the sculpture, you go under the arches, you go under the overhang. Energy, human interaction, passing through time, this is what passage is meant to express. I've really been excited and very fortunate to have a number of water placements over the last five to six years. Stone is the basis of our earth, it's our foundation. When you place stone on water, it defies the instinct that we all have about stone. Uh, the most recent piece I installed in Houston, Crescendo, which is three tons of sculpture, 11 feet 
sitting on top of the water on a point that is about 10 inches. So it keeps you there and it just pulls you into this misunderstanding. A lot of the water settings I've put my pieces on have water running over the side of the reflecting pool. So you've added another dimension to your experience. You have vision, you have movement, and then you have the sound by playing with these basic natural materials brings a life to the piece that only water could do. I like to think that my pieces are so connected to nature they refer to Newton's laws of motion. Everything I do, there's push, there's pull. And those actions are really balanced. You look at a sculpture like Volante, which is a water piece that flows out like a butterfly. Now the motion is constant and it will always stay constant. So in a way, I'm, I feel like I'm defying nature by playing with nature. What I love about working with sightings like the Enzo Enea Tree Museum is that the spaces that are created in these gardens are all natural. And by placing a stone sculpture, it solidifies everything in a way that natural growing plants can't because they have a cycle. And when the sculpture is placed in it, it moves the space beyond its actual walls. Sentinel is my second sculpture ever created from this beautiful blue Brazilian granite. The idea was to create a vertical piece that moves like the wind, and yet it has a sense of humanness to it because there are arms, you could say, that reach out, and the title implies guardian. And the purpose of my work is to create forms that connect you to something that maybe even be a mystery. The fact that we know stone is forever allows us to relax and, and not be afraid of our mortality. And I think that that happiness that happens there is part of the beauty of the, of the stone itself. And that's doing its own job. My job is just to release that. I feel like you, every time I get in the studio, I go back to the sandbox as a kid, playing with stones, playing with the things I played with when I was a kid, but here I'm doing it professionally. But if I lose that spirit of joy, then I lose the purpose. By creating new life, new work, which has a personality and a vibrancy of its own, you're extending time to anyone who wants to experience it. And if they're feeling that, then I've done my job.